Hey guys, for usual everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and it's not intended as financial advice. So let's start from the top here. Uh, I don't have a list on the side. Got a new computer, still have to transfer some stuff over. Uh, naked candles, obviously selling off here. Now let's try to figure out some rationale. I haven't really looked at the chart all day. But what you want to look for when this is happening is uh, we have a lower high and we have a higher high in RSI, so that is a bear div. And you have a spinning, not a spinning top, but a, uh, not a dragonfly, or inverted dragonfly. Uh, and yeah, I don't know what these are called. This is what you want to look for, though. Anytime I see anything like this at the top or bottom, that to me is a reversal. Obviously easier to say now than earlier, but uh, it is what it is. And we're just pulling back here. I expect us to pull back and 1K or 975-ish. The other thing about this, the oscillators, the uh, Stoke crossed bearish and is now below the 80 threshold. So if you want to read that as a bullish weakening, uh, entering bearishness, and volume is lower, but that really has nothing to do with anything right here anyway. Uh, let's turn everything on now. And if we look at FIVs, you can see that uh, we attempted the 50% FIB and also attempted this zone, this all-time high no man's land zone, where it's either support or resistance, but never one or the other. Uh, for the most part, barring this zone here. Uh, so that's not surprising. It's certainly actionable to a certain extent, depending on how you trade at the bottom. Um, as soon as you firmly believe that a bottom is there, you fib it out, and your target's always 50% 50, 50 fib. Uh, my guess is that this here... So once this bottom was firmly established, this was the target. And then the target got hit, and then the price decides where it wants to go from there. If we look at Heiken Ashi, you can see another red candle here. So there's your stop, and you would have been stopped out for sure had you been holding from here or from here. So anything in the long on the 4-hour is telling you to get out, get out, get out, get out. And then just to compare what the fractal looks like, the Bill Williams fractal, uh, you can see Heiken Ashi actually does you one better here because it completes on the candle, not uh, one or two candles past the candle. So uh, the Bill Williams is actually slower than just regular Heiken Ashi. Turning on the 5200, nothing actionable. Again, you're waiting for a cross like this or like this or another touch of the 200 to establish support or resistance like this did on five or six wicks here so nothing too different today about the 5200 cloud is pretty interesting because we are going to get a tk cross here for certain so that means should you have been short from the top the cloud is telling you to be closed on the next couple candles here if you're short yeah, it's always interesting to me how the cloud gets carved out 30 periods at a time and then stuff like this happens where it just like peeks into that perfect valley or trough and then pulls back. Uh, so what I'm kind of expecting here, based on the cloud, just a bunch more of sideways and we are going to get into this zone here and make a decision. If price fails to enter the cloud, you can expect lower lows. Okay, there's that candle. <laughs> Midnight. So on the next couple candles it'll cross. Uh, anyway, so either price is going to you know, do one of these here. It's going to go like this and then retest this zone. Or it's going to enter here and hit one of these flat Kumo zones for sure. Um, it really likes 1120 and 1150. The problem is it's so volatile right now to be long on leverage. It's pretty rough. Uh, you can see that this falling wedge kind of is done. It's kind of out of the falling wedge at this point. The biggest thing I'll be looking for now is the head and shoulders. 
So that's shoulder head, and then the other shoulder should come down right about the 236 fib here, and you're also looking for descending volume profile. That's a really important. So that's an, currently an active pattern for me. Uh, the neckline is here, right here. And what you'll see is this, and it'll, it'll probably come up to here and then test this horizontal again and then go. Uh, this part here is called the throwback. So that's like days ahead of time now, but uh, it's definitely set up for that. So that's Bitcoin. Let's to, like take a look at some Vitalium here. Uh, you can see, again, we keep getting this descending volume on higher highs. All my stuff's going to turn on, but uh, that's not a good continuation sign. Um, no div at the moment. We haven't had a higher high. Uh, there is, I wouldn't call it a hidden bull div either. There's technically a, a lower low here on a higher low. So maybe you'd consider that a, some sort of div. Uh, the long entry signal would have been the breaking of the threshold here with Stoke, if you're looking for some sort of confluence. So let's turn everything back on. Uh, again, uh, nothing actionable here that I'm seeing, if you're not already long or short. Uh, Cloud, Cloud is telling you this is all a bull trend still, and that's no surprise. So, you know, shorting here is risky for sure, shorting this whole thing. Uh, the target I still like is up here, as far as the flag. I've been saying that for days now. Um, and you can see the TK lines have not crossed yet. Um, but should they cross, that's a giant signal. You should be out of everything. Uh, and this flat Kumo is getting longer and longer. The longer this gets, the higher the probability that we hit this zone. And what you'll see is price just drifts sideways for a bit. TK will cross bearish. Lagging span, which is here, will come into price. Then you'll see price start to close in the cloud, maybe one candle. It'll play around in that cloud, and then it'll just all of a sudden just take off down to this uh, flat Kumo. So that's what a beautiful edge-to-edge -edge short entry would look like, and your target is already painted periods, hundreds of periods ahead of it, okay? Maybe not hundreds, but you get the point. It's been here for a while. If we look at Ikanashi, uh, again, you're looking for two candles of the same color that have higher highs and higher closes and opens than the previous candle. As far as an entry is concerned, it's a bull trend, so this would be your re-entry or this candle would be your re-entry. Uh, nothing too special about that. It does get a little noisy, but uh, you know, like you're looking for stuff like this where, you know, let's say you go along here. And then you just hold it, you move your stop here, hold it, move your stop here, hold it, move your stop here. And you may or may not be out here. If you're not out here, you'd move it up here. And then you'd move it up here. Uh, or, you know, here, then here, and then you'd definitely be out by now. So anybody who is long, really using smart stops, I think, is pretty much out at this point. Unless you're just holding on based on a higher time frame. Then if we flip to Tether real quick, USD Tether, again, no surprise, still rising wedge, nothing new there. The target has not changed, 34 bucks. The volume profile is still descending, nothing new there. Uh, it's not a surprise that it bounced off the diagonal support. As far as the oscillators, don't really tell me much. Uh, so it is what it is. You know, if I'm not long, I won't be, I wouldn't be buying here. If I was long, I'd be concerned, <laughs> especially if I've been long this whole time. You know, when am I going to take profit? If you've been long since here, when's the time? You know, this isn't, Ethereum is not going to be a new paradigm. I'm sorry. Uh, it's going to pull back. <laughs> so uh, if you're long and you can hold it, go for it. You know, with a strategy I would typically use if I could split contracts or uh, prices like I can on Poloniex. You know, you'd, you'd start to unload a certain percentage of it and keep a certain percentage of it. So the higher this goes, the more you're unloading and the less you're keeping as a runner. And that way you're locking in all the profit, um, especially if I'm in leverage somewhere uh, with the Ethereum right now. I'd, I'd be concerned. 
That obviously doesn't mean he can't just break up, and I've said this every time. Not because I'm trying to get out of a saying this will break down for certainty, but it should break down more than it shouldn't break down. Um, the problem is it can also keep going. So shorting this is not as good of an idea as putting bids here, which I've done. Um, I wrote up a whole article on this on Bitcoin Magazine. The one interesting thing about Ethereum, the hash rate right now is just going off the charts insanity. Next, let's move to Dash. Um, again, nothing actionable <laughs> on Dash. Um, yesterday I was saying how great this uh, tweezer bottom looked and, uh, you know, it it's bounced certainly, but nothing crazy if you're not on leverage or if you're not like long from the tweezer. Um, you got a lower low in both price and RSI, so no divs there. Uh, Stoke, I don't even know how to read that, so I'm not going to. And if we turn on Hikanashi here, and you can see you got two green candles. It's a bull trend, it's in the cloud, it's just a mixed signals all around. Uh, like I said yesterday, I'd wait to either price to fall above or below the cloud. That's when you want to make your long or short. Um, if it's a, if it comes above the cloud, you want to wait for the TK lines to recross. If it comes below the cloud, you can always short immediately on the candle close, or you can wait until the key June comes closer to price. Because um, what you'll see usually is... Uh, you know, this is part of Elliott Wave, which I don't understand or want to understand, but you, know, you get this momentum to the end of the cloud, and then you get this like resetting of momentum, and then it'll push down. And while it does that, the Kijun doesn't have time to catch up. So after it pushes down, it'll come back up. You still sell this in Bitcoin on the other chart. It'll come back up to the Kijun, and that's where your asks will be uh, to a high probability. So that's all I have for today, other than, well, let's take a look at a few other things. Nothing on 5200. Nothing on cloud. Just a bunch of nothing for Dash. Just best to wait it out. Uh, again, what I'm really looking for here is the cloud. I don't see any active chart patterns or candles other than the tweezer bottom here. So that's all for today, guys. Bitcoin's got a probable inverted head and shoulders coming building. Ethereum's got a probable rising wedge, best seen on ETH USD. And Dash is just no trendless ranging garbage. Wait for it to make a decision here. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for all the new subscribers, Twitter followers. Check the vid description for all the articles I always talk about. And happy trading.